You thought it had ended. Your foolishness astounds me. Have you not learned the secret of the staples? If there be a staple, something lies on the other side. Hello, so today we're just going to have a quick go through the physics equations. I know we've gone through the equations in the context of the things, but I just want to quickly go through them as a separate video. Just in case you don't watch all the others, you can just see all the equations really quickly. So, first we've got kinetic energy, which is EK, so kinetic energy, equals a half, which is 0 0.5, times mass, times velocity squared. Um, yeah. The mass is in kilograms, and the velocity is in meters a second. And then next we've got a similar equation, gravitational potential. EP, gravitational potential, equals mass times gravity times height, which makes a lot of sense, as, yeah, more mass, more force. Higher height, more time, more distance of the force to enact over. So, next, power one. So this is the first one, which is power equals work done over time. Then power 2, wait no, that's power equals energy over time. Then power 2 is power equals work done over time. Energy and work done are basically the same thing, so these basically mean the same thing. They just may be worded different in a question. So for example, it might give you something as energy, or it might give you something as work done. We know both of them to be in joules. And power is in watts and time is in seconds. So, efficiency. So, efficiency 1. Efficiency equals useful power output divided by total power in. So, that basically finds out how much of the stuff you put in is useful. And another thing for efficiency. Efficiency equals useful energy output divided by total energy in. So, as we said, this just depends on what it says is going into it. So, if it says however much power is going into it, this is how you find out the efficiency. If it says how much energy or work done is going into it, you use this one. It's the exact same equation, just using different words. So, charge here, which is, going back to the charge, current, and thingy stuff, Q equals I times T. In this, Q is talking about the charge in coulombs, I is talking about the current in amps, and T is talking about the time in seconds. So that's how you can figure out the charge, but always remember you can mess them around a bit to figure out other things. So, voltage... Voltage, or potential difference, in volts equals current in amps times resistance. resistance. So basically, this is just a rearranged version of R equals V over I, which R equals V over I is resistance equals voltage divided by current. This is just it rearranged. It means the exact same thing. Power 3. Power equals voltage times current. So another way to find out power if you're only given like electrical stuff. I'm assuming this is the power input into it. And then power four would be power equals current squared times resistance. The fact is, to know which one of these power ones you need, you need to know what other variables you're being given. So which other things you're being given to that you could possibly make power out of. So it's all different. So this one here for energy, I believe is energy equals Charge times voltage, which, as we know, energy is work done, they're always replaceable. Um, density is next. Yep, so in density, the P, the P stands for, well, density. So density equals mass divided by volume. So then the next one is weight. So in weight, weight equals mass times gravity. That's a well-known one. Um, you probably remember it from a lot of times. Work done equals force times displacement. I believe the S stands for displacement and D stands for distance. Some um, speed equals distance over time. So that must mean displacement, which is similar to distance, except it has a direction and can be negative. So now let's move along. Force. So force F equals K times E. So that's force equals spring constant times extension. Which force is in newtons, spring constant is in newtons per meter, and extension is in meters. And then force 2, F equals M times A. I believe that is force equals mass times area. Force in newtons again, mass in 
kilograms and areas should be in meters squared, but I'm not entirely sure, so I'm not going to say that. Well, I just did. Um, well, momentum, P equals M times V. So that's momentum equals mass times velocity. Yep, so I believe in this, the V is meant to stand for velocity. The S probably stands for distance or displacement, and T stands for time. We know this is D equals ST, um, distance. Well, as I was saying, we know this is... Um, SDT, speed equals distance over time. I think it's just a re rearranged version of that. And then another thing for speed is the speed of waves. So velocity equals frequency times wavelength. And then, of course, we have the acceleration. A equals the change in... Well, A acceleration equals the change in velocity divided by T, which is time. And remember, the change in velocity is the final velocity minus the initial velocity, as you only want the bit that's actually changed. And then these are given on the sheet anyway, but we might as well go through them. Elastic energy, specific heat capacity, latent heat, acceleration, period, and force. So they'll all be given on the sheet that you're given. So you do not need to know that at all, basically. So yeah, um, those, the only thing you need to know about these is how to rearrange them. You don't actually need to know them off by heart. As with the rest of these, you will have to learn them, so I recommend either watching this a few times, I could use the views, or just um, learning them in your own time. I'm sure you can find a sheet similar to this on the internet, or copy them down yourself. Uh, some people, it helps to copy things down themselves. So anyway, you don't need to learn these, because they'll be on the candidate sheet. Oh, candidate. And yeah, we need to learn all of these, so all of these need to be known by Wednesday. Good luck. <laughs> Goodbye as well.